What is happening, folks? So, part three of how to stay motivated while you're on a fat loss diet. Um, and I'm going to conclude this three part series with the last two constructs of adherence. And those two arguably are the most important um, for long term dietary success and long term dietary adherence when you're on a fat loss diet. And they are the last stages as well. Um, and take time to get to as well. So they are habit and passion. So start off with habit. Habit is essentially the automation of the dietary process. Your habits become ingrained when it comes to that and after four weeks, maybe even six weeks, you can take at least four weeks up to six weeks, but once once you get to that stage, once you get past the third week of that and into the fourth week, fifth week, sixth week, those habits, those dietary habits and practices and systems that you've been working on begin to really consolidate and become part of basically your daily routine. The same way you go and brush your teeth and, you know, for, like I said, for long-term success, it's, it's imperative that you develop habits habits are everything and as well because um your dad has become automated so to speak due to habit motivation which in the early part of the of your dietary uh, phase does wax and wane goes up and it goes down when you get to the habit stage those waxes and wanes become less um prominent and less frequent so things kind of stabilize a bit and your, your motivation isn't up and down uh, every day as much as it would have been the first three weeks of that. And so, um, you know, what is what is um, habit good for? Habit is good for several reasons. And the first is less of a demand for um, discipline. Um, when you have habits in place, you don't have to be as disciplined. Um, to give you an example, you're going to like think, Jesus Christ, like, is this the only example? But the toothbrush example is the best example to illustrate it. Like, you don't have to be disciplined to go brush your teeth. You just go and do it. It's just an ingrained habit that you've developed through years and years of doing it. Um, you don't have to get motivated to brush your teeth. It's just something you go and do. You don't think twice about it. And honestly, the, dad, the, the dietary process um that and for fat loss can also you can get to that point it does take time it's like anything it does take time and you can certainly get to it it also um habit also raises um adherence abilities or improves your adherence abilities so that's essentially just your ability to stick to that consistently for the long term as well and the second second reason why habit is good uh when you're that obviously the, sec the second reason is habits when they are developed and cultivated, tremendously increase the success rate of a dad. Um, and getting to the stage of habit, and if you're a coach watching this, getting your clients to the habit stage is imperative and critical if you want to ensure long-term success when you're dating for fat loss. And the third reason why habit is good and useful when you're when you're dating is Again, like I touched on earlier, it just it improves your long term adherence to um, the diet and process. It facilitates better long term adherence to the dietary process, and in the long run, um, that will stand you in good stead because ninety five percent of people who go on a diet for fat loss um, put back the weight that they lost, put it back on, and then some within the space of three years. So those are pretty stark statistics. Uh, as a coach, I would love to block that trend. Like that, that 5% of people who actually go against that trend and maintain their progress and maintain their fat loss, you know, we want as coaches to raise that, raise those numbers and get more people achieving weight loss, fat loss for their health and overall wellness and longevity and obviously to look good and 
naked as well. It's important that we can raise those figures and get more people to the harvest stage. If, as a society, if we can get more people to the harvest stage, um, what I'm going to touch on the passion stage as well, um, things like obesity will become less of a prevalent problem in society today as well. And to quickly touch on what habit might not be good for. So habit is obviously not good for giving you the initial spark when it comes to dieting, but that's where inspiration comes into play. And I touched on that in part one of the of this three part series. And as well as that, it can be, like habit isn't the best thing for helping you fall in love with the data and process. And that is really achieved in the long run with passion, which will be the next thing I touch on. Um, but basically just to sort of sum things up then, how can we boost passion, or sorry, how can we boost habit? Um, there's many different ways you can boost your habits when it comes to achieving fat loss um, during a diet, diet phase. Now, what I have observed from working with clients and what a lot um, of the leading figures sort of within fat loss would say, um, prep your meals, so bulk buy all the foods that you want to eat for the week. So that just makes your life a hell of a lot easier to prep meals. I would say if you're the type of person who kind of just makes your meals day by day, uh, taking each day back comes, it's kind of that's kind of like a, a unique way of life. Um and it can it just it leaves you less room for error basically. Um and less room to maneuver because you could end up being in a scenario where right I'm in the house, I don't have any of the dad friendly foods that I need to make my dad work and to succeed. So what am I gonna do? I'm not gonna go to the shop, get the food, or am I gonna reach for something that's right there, a convenient? Maybe it's food that's high in calories, that's kind of just junk calories, calorically dense, and that can really hinder your, your progress when it comes to your fat loss. So again, bulk buy all the foods, all the dad friendly foods that you're gonna use, then you prep your meals. Be consistent as well with kind of the same, like, you know, consistency is key. And I hate to say it, but a lot of the time when it comes to successfully achieving fat loss and a diet, it does boil down to doing the same shit every day, same shit, different day. Uh, that also applies to the types of foods you eat, uh, the types of meals you eat, um, and also the time of day that you eat the meals. So I would say as well, for anyone watching this, Keep to a consistent um, meal time pattern. So have your meals around the same times every day. That really just helps build the habits that you're looking to, to put in place when you're dating. So bulk buy all your dad friendly foods, prep your meals, be consistent. Like, you know, like ch choose the foods that you enjoy the most that you know you're going to consistently make and adhere to. And as well as that, just keep the same meal times as well for the meals that you eat. It just helps you build the right habits in place for a fat loss phase when you're dieting. So the final construct of adherence when it comes to dieting for fat loss is passion. Passion can take a while to develop. If you even develop it, I hate to say it, but maybe not everybody's going to be passionate about dieting. I mean, you can't be passionate about every single thing you do in life and that and is something that certainly takes a lot of time to develop a passion for. So examples of people who are passionate about that would be people who like to do bodybuilding competitions, people who do, you know, maybe girls who do uh, bikini or figure competitions. They, a lot of the time, they actually enjoy the process of that and getting lean, getting ripped, getting shredded for the contest prep, even though maybe the, someone who isn't in that arena or is not in that little world of bodybuilding or figure competitions might think that's crazy, that's insane, like the, the way they approach their nutrition. Um, some would even say they're like the calories are eating is, is like starvation calories. And I'm not gonna lie, like a lot of the time, like bodybuilders and bikini competitors, like they are eating like starvation calories, but, they're happy for the most part and they're they're passionate about the, the the thing the competitions and the things that they're competing in so they don't really see it as a bad thing so um 
you know, like I said, it takes a while to develop passion, arson, the love of the dating process. Now, when you develop passion for dating, it leads to one, two things. Now, it either leads you to find it easier and more enjoyable, um, engaging in healthy eating and dating in the long run, or what it does, like the example I touched on earlier for bodybuilders, bikini competitors, whatever, um, people who like to get shredded, shredded for competitions, things like that, it makes, it, it kind of makes it easier for you to get super shredded and it basically gives you super levels of motivation and adherence is what passion gives and the problem with passion and the, I suppose you could say the, the cons of it and the only caveat I will say about it is just the length of time it takes to develop passion. You know, you see a lot of fitness influencers on Instagram or whatever saying, yo, I'm going to make you fucking passionate about fitness. Um, <laughs> like you can't make someone passionate about fitness in a matter of seconds or minutes like, or in a day or even weeks. It, it takes months, if not years to develop um, passion for that and, or training. Um, don't get me wrong, some people can fall in love with the process of that and training much quicker than others. You know, everyone's different. Everybody's wired differently and we all have different interests. But for a lot of people, um, it takes time. Even myself, like I love training, I love healthy eating. Um, there's so many factors that play into why I do it. You know, there's internal, there's intrinsic motivational factors, there's extrinsic motivational factors all sort of coming together that help me stay on track and want to train and eat well and just live a long, healthy life. Um, but anybody can develop passion, I firmly believe it, if you give yourself enough time, even if it takes fucking years. Um, so that would be the only downside about passion. It's, you can get inspired to take action in seconds or minutes, but it, passion takes months, if not years. Um, but don't be disheartened, you can certainly develop it. Um, like I said, it just takes time. So how do we develop this super level of adherence and motivation by developing passion? Well, there's many different ways you can boost it. So kind of similar to the previous constructs that we talked about. Um, definitely dating with like-minded people or getting your partner, your friends, your family on board can really make the world a difference. Um, if you or dating with like many people who are passionate about the same goals and outcomes and the processes that you're engaging into, it, it actually really does make the world of a difference. You know, it's like training with like many people, um, um, you know, being pa and people who are also passionate about training. It's like training in a team together. For example, if you play sports, everybody there is passionate. Like everybody who plays sports there is part of a team, whether it be football, rugby, um, soccer, whatever, whatever the case may be, like everybody there is passionate about the sport that they're playing. They're passionate about being part of the team. Um, you know, so if you can find, search out for those people, and it could be honestly things as simple as Facebook groups, um, even blogs and forums online. People who are going sort of through the same thing as you. If you're that for fat loss follow the right kind of people as well on the socials um who give out good content that will inspire you further and inspire you to take more action and continue to stay on track you know there's a whole host of people there's Liam norton there's eric helms um lad mcdonald just to name a few people within the arena of fat loss on daten um, who can really just help you whenever it comes to your uh, fat loss step. You know, other, other ways you can boost um, your passion for that. And can just be looking at, at that and successes of the past. You know, that can be t that success you've achieved. That can be that success of other people as well. Um, and really just letting that sink in and really just letting it take root in your mind. I've achieved X, Y, and Z, I've dropped such and such dress sizes, I've lost three stone, you know, I got super shredded for that holiday I went on or for my wedding, 
um, and just imagining the feeling, the, the feeling you felt at that moment in time, and looking to sort of basically do it all over again and continue to do it over again. You can make it a you can make it a seasonal thing. Myself, for example, like I don't try to be super shredded all year round because it's not realistic, it's not practical, and often it's it's probably not healthy either to be walking around so eight percent body fat all year round. Um, very few people can do that. Uh, you're either the only people that can do that, or people with elite level genetics and probably taking a whole host of performance enhancing drugs. Um, so what I would typically do is I like to just reserve getting super lean, super shredded for the summertime and then the winter time, sort of springtime, I just naturally let myself not get out of shape but just relax a wee bit when it comes to the diet, still eat healthily 90% of the time, still focus on nutrient dense foods but I don't really care about counting calories, I prioritise my protein of course but I really, I really focus on maximising my strength and my muscle mass in the off season or the winter season when it comes time to the summer where I want to look a wee bit leaner just from a static point of view then I will you know shift gears count calories ensure I'm in a calorie deficit ensure I'm optimizing my protein intake um tracking my food tracking my weight things like that so um just to finish off I hope this series has been helpful uh, sort of decoding deconstructing the constructs behind fat loss and the whole so as you could say adherence model of fat loss like what are the different stages of dieting when it comes to first off inspiration then motivation then setting the right intentions then building um discipline and then building the right habits and then finally you get to the stage of passion hopefully you know within months years whatever it takes you get that stage and that becomes so much more easier Especially, like I said earlier, four to six weeks, that becomes habitual. It becomes so much more easier. Um, and you can even, at that stage, that's maybe where the seeds of passion begin to actually take root and things become exponentially much easier. So, hope it's been informative. Thanks for watching. Appreciate it. Love you all.